Hello everyone, welcome to English with Evelyn. For today's study, I have chosen the poem Father to Son, which has been written by Elizabeth Jennings. This poem is part of class English, uh, class 11 English curriculum and it can be found in NCRT reader Hornbill. This is a picture of our poet Elizabeth Jennings and this is some information about her. So, Elizabeth Jennings was born in England, in Lincolnshire and she shifted. They all moved to Oxfordshire when she was little and that is where she spent most part of her life. Her style of writing was traditional, simple and objective style. And from her poetry, we can see that she was a devout Roman Catholic and she had a lot of um, love for, the, for Italy and especially for Rome because that is where she had gone in 1955 when she won the Somerset Mom Prize for A Way of Looking. She used this prize money and she went to Italy and spent some time there and where she got to encounter the religion you know, from very close quarters. And these, this is a list of some of the um, noteworthy awards and prizes that she was bestowed with. A very important one is, apart from the one in 1955, is the one in 1992 when the Queen of England conferred upon her the Order of the British Empire, the commander of the Order of British Empire. And in 2001, the year she died she also received the honorary doctorate of divinity because you know she was such a devout roman catholic so she received this honorary phd from durham university now the introduction to the poem this poem is written from the pro point of view of a father father to son so he is talking the father is talking about his son to his son and his father is expressing his deep grief and agony because the relationship between his son and himself is not what it used to be okay and so because of all that has taken place between them because of uh, instead of love bitterness has taken over he is writing this he is saying this to his son and he wants to mend things but they do not know how to do it now. Now, this situation is not very uncommon and not just in our country but in all countries. Okay, it's, it's a universal problem that when children grow up, there is a sort of, you know, alienation, indifference that comes or distance that comes between parents and children. And... There is no one responsible for it, okay? It's not that it is, it is someone's, anyone's mistake. But then it should be dealt with, with a lot of understanding and consideration for each other's feelings. The theme is, uh, of the poem is generation gap because no matter how much we try to evolve, there is always be something that our children are doing, they are saying or they are practicing that we would not like and which is not seen by us in a very favorable light. So this mutual lack of understanding because children also think that their life is completely theirs and the parents need not interfere whereas the parents feel that they are doing everything for the well-being of the child. Okay, And they, they, they also forget that the child is a grown-up now and can take his own decisions and the children also forget that the parents have been there all their lives and would want to be an important part of the children's life now when they're old. So this poem highlights the internal conflict of a father that a father undergoes when his son becomes old enough to live life his own way according to his interests and his perceptions. So let us come to a detailed explanation of the first stanza. I do not understand this child though we have lived together now in the same house for years. So in this first sentence, 
the poem the poet is saying that he is like look you know looking at his son from a distance and he's saying i do not understand him and it's it's not possible to believe because i have lived with this child under the same roof for years and i feel that i know nothing of him i feel that in spite of living together for so long he's a stranger so he says because i cannot understand him as he is today i try to build up a relationship with him i try to forge a relationship with him from how he was when he was smaller when he was a child so this is what the father is doing from his end to mend the the relationship okay to remove the strain from the relationship but is it going to work it's not going to work because the child is not the same person that he was when he was a child he is a grown up man now right so whatever the father is uh, doing in desperation is not going to work okay and you know it's going to make matters worse we can understand this you cannot treat a grown up like a child he has evolved you know over you know these 20 25 years and he's a different person and we now need to look at him as that person but the father is saying that i do not know who this person is right so in this stanza the father is reflecting on his ability to inability to understand his own son he does not know his likes dislikes and he does not understand why he is doing what he is doing okay so he wants to build up the same kind of re- relationship but that is not working and because of that he is expressing his agony and grief in these lines now in the in this stanza you can see that there is no punctuation after the first second third fourth fifth lines there's no punctuation there are these are called run on lines this is enjambment and there is cesura cesura is is when there is a punctuation or a a halt okay in the middle of the of a line all right so the first stanza is done see yet have i killed this is another sentence i did not take it up now i am going to continue it with the second stanza because that is where it is supposed to be yet have i killed the seed i spent or sown it where the land is his and none of mine now arises self doubt when children don't turn out the way the parents want them to the parents in desperation start introspecting retrospecting they start asking themselves is it anything to do with my up- upbringing have i done something wrong have i gone wrong anywhere okay so he says that the seed i spent the seed is a metaphor for his son and sown it sown is means you know he is referring to the to the upbringing so have i sown it where i did not take care that the land is his and not mine have i sown the seed in a different land not my own land if the seed is yours you sow it in your land ha na but because this doubt has come the fa- the, the the father is filled with self doubt why does he say this that the land is his and none of mine because the way the the son has taken roots the place where the son has taken roots the father feels that that is not my ground that means the value system the thoughts the ideas you know the the way of leading the life it's completely different that is why he feels that the land is his and none of mine and then he talks about the way they communicate he says we speak like strangers he's comparing themselves the the boy his boy and himself to strangers he says we he says we speak like strangers there's no sign of understanding in the air so you can understand how much strain there is 
okay there is no sign of understanding and then he says at the end of this stanza this child is built to my design yet what he loves i cannot share that means the resemblance is definitely there the son does look like his father the child is built to my design design mera hai matlab looks meri tarah hai yet what he loves i cannot share lekin jo hamari jo pasand na pasand hai हमारे जो थॉट्स हैं हमारी जो लाइक्स और डिसलाइक्स हैं वो अलग हैं मतलब फिजिकली बाहर से तो वो मेरी तरह है लेकिन अंदर से जो वो इंसान है वो इंसान मुझसे अलग है मुझसे फ़र्क है सो देर इज़ अ लैक ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड अ कम्युनिकेशन गैप विच मेक्स दैम बिहेव नॉट लाइक फादर एंड सन विच मेक्स दैम कम्युनिकेट नॉट लाइक फादर एंड सन बट लाइक strangers and the father acknowledges yes he looks like me but that is where the resemblance ends let us come to the third stanza silence surrounds us see how painful it would it must be for somebody to say that our relationship has become so bad so strained that silence surrounds us साइलेंट किस साइलेंस किसको सराउंड करेगा जब वहाँ आवाज़ें नहीं होंगी जब वहाँ बातें नहीं होंगी और बातें क्यों नहीं होंगी वाई इज़ देर नो कॉन्वर्सेशन देर इज़ नो कॉन्वर्सेशन बिकॉज देर इज़ नथिंग कॉमन टू टॉक अबाउट ठीक है दैट इज़ वाई साइलेंस सराउंड देम नाउ आई वुड हैव हिम प्रोडिगल रिटर्निंग टू हिज फादर्स हाउस द होम ही न्यू रादर दैन सी हिम मेक एंड मूव हिज वर्ल्ड तो ये बोलते हैं नाउ देर इज़ एन अल्यूजन to the story of a prodigal son from the bible prodigal son mein there is uh, there is a son who takes his share of the property he squanders all that money and then becomes poor and finally one day when he is leading a very tough life he thinks of his father and he says that i'll go and ask my father for forgiveness and maybe he will keep me in his house and i can be with him as a if not as a son then as a servant now what a painful time for a father to keep on you know waiting for a son like that but eventually the father is waiting the son comes back the prodigal son comes back and he the father welcomes him he is treated like a son he is um, you know welcomed again into the family and to the house and so we come to know and uh, the you know the the large heartedness the generosity of a parent of a father to ye jo kahani hai prodigal son ya udau putra ki kahani jo hai bible mein se ye father usko refer karte hue usko allude karte hue kehte hain ki i would have him prodigal kaun father chahega ki uska beta udau putra nikle hai na no father wants his son to be prodigal but the father here is so desperate to get his son back into his own house and in his own home and in his world that he says i would have him prodigal ki wo isse acha to udau putra ho jaye hai na and then when he return to the house to my house to the home okay i will forgive him to ye father chahta hai ki jis tarah se usne apni duniya bana li hai apni alag usko chhod kar ke agar ye mere paas aa jaye bhale hi ye udau putra ho jaye hai na i would forgive him and from that sorrow a new love will shape that means he wants that ki ye jo grief hai isme se ye jo grief hoga na kyunki uska beta to udau putra hoga to dukh to hota hai lekin jab wo wapas subha ka bula kehte hai na sham ko ghar aa jaye jab wo wapas ghar aa jayega to main uske sath mein ek naya hi rishta bana lunga fir se wo mera beta pehle ki tarah jaisa bachpan mein wo mera beta tha waisa ho jayega so this is the desire of the father now we should not judge the father's character or the father's persona because of this because he is not doing it out of selfishness he is doing it out of love for his son he is missing his son very badly and that is why he is thinking of these things okay so he wants to uh, you know bring up from this sorrow you know forge a new kind of relationship a fresh refreshing relationship with his son now 
we come to the fourth stanza father and son we both must live on the same globe and on the same land he speaks i cannot understand myself why anger grows from grief we each put out an empty hand longing for something to forgive ab ye bolte hain ki hum we both must live on the same globe and on the same land is it is it not true are they not living on the same globe and on the same land okay but then we realize that what he means is that the sun has created his world his own world so he says that world is different from my world that is why he says that we should live on the same globe and same land he speaks he says i cannot understand myself why anger grows from grief when there is estrangement when there is loss of love and trust and faith there is bound to be a lot of anger and frustration because both of them are missing what they used to once share a beautiful loving relationship both of them are are missing that and both of them are longing they, you know they are putting out an empty hand they want you know something to forgive but until and unless one or the other asks for forgiveness who are they and what are they going to forgive so that is the question they want to okay they are longing to forgive longing for something to forgive but they are not longing to ask for forgiveness so the stanza for it says that the sun speaks for the first time and he too admits that he also feels forlorn he also feels sad and he is also angry but both of them they are they are willing to forgive each other but no one is ready none of them are ready to take the first uh, none of them is ready to take the first step of asking for forgiveness from the other but the situation can definitely improve if they find a way of getting close to each other and with this we come to the figures of speech some i have already discussed the others we'll discuss now so simile where the when the father says we speak like strangers so he is comparing his son and himself to strangers this is a simile then there is metaphor i have explained this the seed i spent so seed metaphorically refers to the sun and sown here the seed that i have spent or sown sown refers to the father's way or his effort in bringing up his son now there is consonance consonance means the repetition of the same letter or sound in the middle or at the end silence surrounds us now here we have to see the sound a consonant sound which occurs not in the beginning but anywhere else if there a consonant sound is repeated in the middle or towards the end of the word that will be the figure of speech of consonants and if it occurs in the beginning then it is um uh, alliteration c silence surrounds so this is an example of alliteration whereas silence and i have underlined the letters please note that silence us now some people would say why not surrounds okay but surrounds the last syllable the last sound is z sound it's not the s sound that is why silence and us are consonants are an example of consonants then alliteration another example home he now we come to allusion allusion i have already explained antithesis is when two contrasting or opposing ideas are juxtaposed that is antithesis then the rhyme scheme you can see for yourselves it is a b b a b a 
then cesura i have told you where there is a, a punctuation or a halt in the middle of a line an enjambment is when there is no punctuation at the end of the line okay so i've used the same examples and i've put the two figures of speech so together so that you can see the difference between them so this was it for today thank you so much for watching please like and share the video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already thank you so much bye bye